Hey, I'm Mary. And I'm Jake. And you're listening to The Fly Angle, the official RDU Airport podcast. Welcome to another episode of The Fly Angle. It's a busy time of year at RDU. Yeah, it's holiday season. We got through a really good Thanksgiving week. Very busy here. Yes, it was really nice to see passenger traffic levels increase in our parking as well as air travel. We know that families were going to visit their loved ones and maybe take a little break away. Yeah, this time of year, a lot of leisure flyers, especially in 2020, you're seeing a lot of those uh, disproportionate to what we would see normally with business travel. And for us, that means those leisure flyers, they might not have been on a plane in a while, certainly not since COVID-19 came about. So a lot of them are seeing some of our new health and safety measures for the first time. So it's going to be really interesting uh, seeing how that goes. Exactly. And if you did not hear the message loud and clear, we need you to mask up. We've got plenty of increased health and safety measures here at the airport. You can learn more about that via our Fly Confident Fly RDU campaign. Yeah, the other really interesting thing that's happened uh, in the last few weeks or so, some of our international Flights have resumed. Cancun and Montego Bay, Jamaica, both are back on the board. Yes, that's exciting. We talked a little bit about that with Kenneth in our last episode. You know what, Mary? Some warm weather sounds good right about now. (laughs) It does. It does. We're excited for it. But Jake, anyways, let's jump right into it. Yeah, so we did our first airmail segment last episode, and you guys seem to love it. We got a bunch of questions back, so let's do it again. Our first airmail question today comes from Evan Johnson. Hey, Evan. Evan asks, prior to the pandemic, I have noticed that Southwest Airlines occupies only a few gates within Terminal 1, leaving quite a few gates unused. Are there future plans for Southwest to occupy the rest of the gates, essentially making it an all-Southwest terminal? Or is there the possibility that a future new airline could also partially occupy Terminal 1, sharing that terminal with Southwest? Great question, Evan. I think it's important to first answer the question, where is Terminal 1 today? Southwest is our only carrier currently operating there. Um, They have been for some time. Uh, Before COVID-19, RDU's intent was to shift some of our carriers over to Terminal 1, carriers like Allegiant, Spirit, Frontier. That was mostly driven by something called gate utilization, which really measures how efficient gates and terminals are operating at any given moment. Then COVID-19 happened, right? Mm -hmm. (laughs) So we hit pause on that and many other projects because of the downturn in traffic due to COVID. And at the end of the day, what we have to do is really assess what we'll do when traffic starts to pick back up. And with new concessions and gates to be activated in Terminal 1 on the horizon, there really hasn't been a decision made yet about what Terminal 1 looks like in the future. But we think it's an important part of how RDU keeps delivering that travel experience, whether you're flying out of Terminal 2, Terminal 1, wherever it might be. Exactly. Maximizing that gate utilization. Thanks for that question, Evan. Our next email question is from Jeremy Harper. Jeremy writes, I would love to hear more on the podcast about the new runway that allows for larger planes to land. I try to stay as up to date as I can on the growth of our our airport because I would love for it to double in size a couple of times. Well, us too, Jeremy. Exactly. Well, Jeremy, the authority has started the replacement of the existing runway 5 left, 2, 3 right, which is the west runway closest to Terminal 2. That runway is going to be rebuilt farther from Terminal 2 to meet the latest FAA airfield standards and to allow for the existing runway 5 left, 2, 3 right to remain in operation until that replacement is finished. So that program right now is currently in the environmental review and planning stage. Yeah, right now we are really focused on rehabbing that five left, two, three right runway. Um, It is at the end of its useful life, but we are going to extend that that useful life as long as we possibly can. That's a way to be cost conscious over time, especially with a very large cost intensive asset like that. Exactly. Well, we really appreciate the airmail questions. We hope that they will continue coming in. But let's transition a little bit, topping the headlines at RDU. The Federal Aviation Administration is making changes to air traffic procedures. These changes are set to take place in February, and they're meant to improve safety, efficiency, and operator use. Yeah, so what the FAA is doing here is really kind of thinking about how their processes are for approach and takeoff for aircraft that are coming into and out of the airport. A lot of these changes are pretty routine in nature. Um, The average flyer probably is not going to notice them. 
Um, one thing that we are excited about is potentially flu- fewer flight delays. That's a great thing. And they did host a workshop. If you want to learn more about that, that's up on our blog. Uh, a lot of resources and helpful information if that is something that is interesting to you. Also, RDU recently announced a collaboration with SAS to improve its passenger forecasting models. The carry-based analytics software company has helped the airport predict traveler numbers recently. So SAS is a really cool company. We're fortunate to have them right in our backyard. They're just two exits down from RDU, but they are world-renowned at the top of their game when it comes to analytics, software analytics in, in particular. This requires a little bit of backstory. Traditional forecast methods that we've used at the airport for understanding passenger volume, cargo volume, etc., became less predictable due to COVID-19. We relied on things like GDP or airline capacity and other factors. Now those are less reliable. They're not really correlating with air traffic. So we're fortunate to have one of the top analytics companies in the world right next door. So they've lent their expertise to improve those forecasting models. And now we can better predict how many people might show up on a day, any given day, when they're coming, even how we might need to staff up and and run our operations accordingly. Does that mean that that would impact or help us determine peak times and maybe parking usage and things like that? It definitely does. And, you know, there's even a a potential revenue impact from that, too, because when we operate more efficiently, we can do these things much just much more predictably. Um, And that helps everybody at the airport. So we're really thankful to have SAS's help on this. They've done a great job with it. We're very excited about it. So if you've been to RDU recently, you might have seen some new retail and restaurants that look a little more familiar to you. They are local concessionaires. They're artisans that are from the Triangle or from the state of North Carolina. And we wanted to talk a little bit about that trend of shop local. If you've ever seen that hashtag on social media or if you've ever supported Small Business Saturday, and how that's coming to RDU and and how we're finding success with it. And so with that, we wanted to bring in our special guest for this episode, Director of Concessions, Kimberly Stewart. How are you, Kimberly? Hi, I'm good. Happy to be here. Great. With that said, let's get into our questions. Thank you again for being here, Kimberly. I'd love to hear about what inspired the airport concessions team to start looking more closely at local restaurants and retail as an option for RDU. Okay. So really a primary goal of most airports and RDU is no different is to create a sense of place so that when you arrive here, you kind of get a sense of North Carolina or the Triangle region. And so we wanted to duplicate that in our concession program, kind of show what our area has to offer whether that be through food or retail, we want that perspective to be woven throughout our concession program. Yeah, Is that something that you think that travelers have been ready for for a long time, or is it something that, you know, you guys maybe were walking around town one day and you saw something local and you're like, man, we should do that at the airport. I think just like you said earlier, it kind of is a trend in street side, which is non-airport retail shopping, that you're looking for that experience, for that unique gift or that unique meal that you may be able to find street side. We want to, again, bring that into our concessions program. I love that concept. And RDU's local options like Root & Branch or Whiskey River have been guest favorites. Why do you think people are gravitating to those? I think our guests gravitate to Root & Branch and also Whiskey River because, again, they offer a unique experience, something that's unexpected in an airport setting. Root & Branch, which is probably one of my favorite stores, it has that boutique-style feel of shopping. The products are local, handcrafted by artisans that live in in our community. It's just a fun shopping experience where you can select items again that kind of gravitate you back to the region. It gives you something to take with you, a, a taste of our area. The selections are unique. They're different again from what you will find in a traditional travel retail shop in an airport. I'm sure you remember, but uh, for our listeners at home, USA Today runs uh, a program every year called the 10 Best Awards. And both Root and & Branch and Whiskey River were named kind of superlative in their categories, respectively, for all, I believe it was restaurants uh, or local restaurant bar, yeah, bar options experience. in mm-hmm. all of North American airports, right. which is a really, you know, top-notch honor. Absolutely. And then Root and & Branch, similarly, was the, mm-hmm. the, I believe it was the best local shop yes. among all North American airports. So we were really proud of those. And if you walk into either one of them on any given day at the airport you can see why they're packed with people safely distanced now exactly of course packed with shoppers looking to find something to take with them yeah and and also we talked about 
um, Whiskey River, and, and I really wanted to point out the design perspective of that particular unit because that was something that was different for RDU. Um, we have the open air bar that's actually in the patio setting. Of course, the mechanical bull, which is, you know, a, a draw for people. And also Whiskey River does live music on select days and times. So again, travelers don't expect to see that in the airport, and we were able to give them, again, that experience. If you guys weren't familiar, Dale Jr. is involved with, with yeah. Risky River as well. So he's one of my favorite NASCAR drivers, or at least he was. So yeah, yeah. And when we <laughs> I had was the... excited to see him be on board with that. Yeah, exactly. And he actually came out and helped celebrate with us the grand opening. So it was really nice to have him here and, and to see his namesake actually come to life. Changing gears a little bit, walk us through how businesses are selected for operation at the airport. What is that process like, Kimberly? We basically encourage anyone who's interested in doing business at the airport to first visit our website, rdu.com backslash concessions. You can register for our interest list. That puts you on an email distribution list for us to directly communicate with you when we release our solicitations or just to share information. There's also a resource page there. Especially for a local business who's never done business at the airport, they can truly go there and really start to learn about the process. Operating in an airport is very different than operating street side. So it's very important to get educated long before a solicitation actually hits the street, as we say. And I love that. And I've had the pleasure of working with your concessions team and attending some of those informational workshops, which they're now virtual, but very helpful in walking someone who's interested or even someone who's done this before, maybe at a different level or in a different area. You have varied offerings for folks who have experience or those who are new to this, like you mentioned. Can you talk a little bit about the focus at RDU on creating opportunities for minority and women-owned small businesses? Yes. We're always looking for ways to invest involve our DBE certified businesses. And DBE stands for Disadvantaged Business Enterprise, which is specific to airport concessions. All of our tenants either have a DBE certified partner or partners. In some cases, we have partners that are 100% certified. Our small business office works with the FAA to, to establish goals for our program and uh, also assisting parties who are interested in uh, participating in the program as well. And you talk about Root and Branch. That was a really special partnership with uh, National Retailer Marshall Retail Group. They partner with two local businesses, Edge of Urge and Art so Deco. Cool. Yeah, I love um, those guys. Yes, and we love to see those ladies come out. You can really see their hands in how the store is designed, how it's put together. They have a wonderful display window. So that is truly a partnership with local businesses in the community tied to or paired with a, a national retailer. So a big win all around for us. I always like to tease my friend, her and her family own Chapel Hill Toffee. And oh, they yeah. Carry the toffee and Root and Branch. Yeah. And I'm always taking pictures of it and sending it to her. But yeah, another, yeah. another woman-owned business getting, yeah. getting supported there. Absolutely. Tell us about, and I'm very curious about this question, if okay. there are any challenges that people would be surprised to learn about the process of soliciting those new locations or new, new stores. There certainly are several challenges. And I think the biggest one, and we've kind of alluded to this already, It's just understanding the airport operation in general, the traffic patterns that we have. You know, you have you have highs in the morning, then you might have a little lull through the day and then you have another high in the afternoon and also the hours of operation. We are a 16 hours a day. That is, again, different from what you see on the street. And also the costs associated with preparing responses to solicitations all the way to the cost of construction. That's a challenge. It's not a challenge that can't be overcome, but it is something that someone who's interested in operating an airport needs to understand. Again, that's where that education piece comes in. And also the timeline. The timeline associated can be a long, tedious process, typically from solicitation release 
to an actual opening of uh, the store, the process could take 16 to 18 months. And so you really have to be committed to the long haul. Uh, It's so worth it in the end. Wow, that's helpful information for those that are trying to plan accordingly or interested. Again, going back to what I mentioned before, I think you guys do a phenomenal job of walking folks through that process. And that's outlined on the website, as you mentioned as well, through the solicitations and Q&A section. So there is an abundance of resources if you are interested. And kudos to you all and to those listeners. If you're interested, if we're planting some seeds, start looking (laughs) now. Yeah. And we do know that there's more on the horizon, Kimberly, like La Farm Bakery out of Cary. Yes, how exciting is that? <laughs> I might add a couple pounds when they yes. enter the airport. <laughs> Can you tell us a little bit about that? So we really are excited to be moving forward with La Farm Bakery and Cafe in Terminal 2. Um, the cafe will actually be located in the marketplace, which is the center of the Terminal 2 concourse. So as you descend from the security checkpoint, it will be right there in front of you for all to see. So is it safe to call that kind of like a flagship restaurant? This Absolutely. is kind of a focal point for RDU. That's- yes, yes. We have uh, tagged it as the cornerstone of our concession program. Pre-pandemic, we were on course to really turn over all of the food in Terminal 2. The pandemic has kind of slowed our process, a little bit of a different strategy, but we think La Farm is going to kick off what we hope to be recovery next year. We do hope to have it open to the public sometime late spring of 2021. It will feature a bistro-like setting, so they will actually incorporate patio seating, so you can actually sit open air in the concourse, and it will offer a full bar. That full bar will again be on the patio. They will have an all-day menu for full meals or light snacks. They also have a great grab-and-go menu. And then coffee. Coffee will be a key component for La Farm, and they're going to offer a local coffee, uh, which is counterculture. Then there will be a window. This is my favorite part. There's a window on the storefront that you can look in and actually see the oven where they will bake so one of La Farm's... The bread being yes, made. the bread. Very nice. Yes, and one of their specialties, which is my personal favorite, white chocolate baguettes. I am super excited about that. Well, this is great. I definitely am excited to shop local at the airport. We're definitely loving it so far. We're really doing some great things with local flavor here. And Kimberly, thank you for your contribution to that and for joining us today. It's been a pleasure learning. Can you share the website again if someone's interested in doing business or future business at RDU? Yes, www.rdu.com backslash concessions. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. All right, that's going to do it for this episode. We have been having a lot of fun so far and really enjoy your airmail questions. Email us at communications at rdu.com and we'd like to include you in a future episode. Yes, and if you haven't already done so, please make sure you subscribe to The Fly Angle on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts. And for more news on what's happening at the airport, visit rdu.com or find us on social media using at RDU Airport. That sounds great. We hope to hear or see you sometime soon. We hope you have a safe and healthy holiday. Sounds good. Take care. See you next time.